It's the vertical one. Correct. Why? What's your reasoning? Because it has to be uh, because it has to be seven times four. Agreed. See how nice that was? And just for fun, can you tell me what this side is? The missing side? Um, uh, 96. Very nice. Thank you so much. Abby, let's talk about this one. 6.4.2. Um, Can you read the question? Points A and B are on circle with radius nine. Given that the center of the circle is three units from A, B, find A, B, find A. B. All right. So I just drew you a circle. Do you want to draw something? You want to make a chord somewhere? Um, yeah. Um, it's nine. Oh, yeah. on a circle with a radius of nine, yes? Yeah. Okay, so that's right. That's nine. So A and B, where's A and B? Um, you can pick any point. Okay. Right? So why don't you pick this one, one point here? Since you made a radius there, yeah? Yeah. Pick another point. Love it. Do you agree there's another radius there? Yeah. Why don't you put a radius? And I'm gonna join your, oops, I was supposed to use straight line. Let me try that again. There we go. All right. Points A and B are circle with a radius of nine, given that the center of the circle is three units from A and B. Where do you, what do you think they mean? Um. Well, obviously, part of the circle is nine units away, or the line is nine units away. But they're giving us a very specific place. When they say it's three units, they actually mean the closest to it. Where would that closest, smallest line be? From the center of the circle to the line, where would that be? Where is the smallest, closest line? From the center. Pink line. To here, yes? That yeah. is three units. And that is the smallest, closest line. And when you get that smallest, closest line, what kind of an angle are you making? You're going to make a 90 degree angle. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. So, and what are they asking us? Find, the, find this distance, correct? Yeah. Right? Not around the circle, but the distance of the line. Do you agree? Yeah. And I'm going to move that nine over because it's a little confusing about where, I think I wrote it, where it is. I'm going to put it a little bit closer to your line. That is nine. So how do you find the distance? Can you not find this little X1? Yeah. You can. Yeah. yeah. Using what? The Pythagorean theorem. Let's do it. And there's not a Pythagorean triple that I know that involves three and nine. Unfortunately. So how do you do this? Three squared plus x one squared equals to nine squared. Very nice. Continue. Doing a great job. So then it's 9 plus x1 squared 
Um, equals two eighty one. Agreed. Continue. Um, then so x one squared equals to um eighty one minus nine. Very nice. Which equals to um or seventy two. Agreed. So, how do you find x one now? Because it's x squared is seventy two, correct? Yeah. So. So x one equals to seventy square root of seventy two. Agreed. Now, seventy two does not have a nice square root, does it? No. Because eight squared is eighty one, and seven squared is 49, it's going to be, right? What do you think? What do we do here? Um, so 72, what multiplies to 72 that we care about? That in other words, nine. in nine, yes. Yeah. Do you also agree, you know that 92, 72 is nine times eight, right? Nine times eight, but we can't root eight. So what other number do I care that we can root? Would you agree four? And I'm left with a two, yes? Yeah. You, you see what I'm doing here? Yeah. What's the square root of nine? Isn't that three? Um, What's the square three, root of four? Two. And I'm left with root two. What's three times two? Um, six square root of two. Very nice. So what was that six square root of two that you just found? Isn't that here? Um, yeah, x1. Yeah. So how yeah. do you find x now? Um, it's just that times, uh, it's just that times, uh, two. How many of the, two, right? Because you said, didn't yeah. you find two of them? Yeah. Because you found this error length, so now you need this whole thing, correct? So times two. Do you know how to multiply this kind of thing? Um, it's 12 square root of 2. Perfect. The answer to my question was, yes, you did know how to do it. Very nice. Thank you so much. All right. We are going to move on. We're going to move on to 6.5. Okay. I'm going to talk for a second and then we will continue with this. Today's lesson is going to be challenging, but only in so only in that you're going to have to pay attention because I'm going to give everyone a few steps in the next question. So make sure you're following along. And if I do something and you miss it, please let me know and I will explain because that's my job. Okay, I'm putting down my line, trying desperately to there we go. Okay. So let me start by saying Heron's formula finds area of a triangle based on its three sides. Um, Emily. Do you agree if you have a right angle triangle, it's very easy to find an area? 
Yeah. Why? Um, because you multiply the base times height. I mean, that it's already like given divided by two. Correct. And when you have a right angle triangle, it's easy to find because you have two sides. If you have a non right angle triangle, what's the problem? Um, well, you usually don't know the height. Agreed. Okay. We're going to develop Heron's formula today. And I'm going to start by giving it to you so that you see what, where we are going. Okay. So the formula for Heron's formula, Heron's formula is this. Area of a triangle is equal to the square root of S, and I'll tell you what S is in a second, S minus A times S minus, times S minus B times S minus C, where A, B, and C are the three sides. And S is called the semi-perimeter. What do you think they mean by semi-perimeter? What do you think they mean, Emily, by semi-perimeter? Um, half of the perimeter. Exactly. Could you give me a formula based on A, B, and C for the semi-perimeter? Um, A plus B plus C over 2. Okay. Are you familiar with Heron's formula? Um, not really. Okay. All right, we're going to start with 6.21 and we're going to we're going to find one as an example and then we are going to develop the formula. All right, um, just let me draw the triangle on the web board and Shayla, could you while I'm doing that read the question. Okay, in this problem, we find the area of triangle ABC, which has sides of length 13, 14 and 15. We start by drawing altitude AX. Let it have length at H and let BX, I mean BX equals X. What is XC in terms of X? Okay, so I just drew it out. All right, and it's very important that this is, we're going to call this our A. We're going to call this is our B. And this is our C. Okay, so could you do first one? Okay. Um, I'm gonna just call that Y, is that all right with you? Yeah. All right. So what is Y? Y is 14 minus X. Agreed, because we don't know where that is. We know it's not in the middle. If it was 13 and 13, it would be easy, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, Sophia, can you do B? Apply the Pythagorean theorem to triangle A, B, X to get an equation with H and X in it. Okay. Go for it. Um, X squared plus H squared equals 13 squared. Agreed? X squared plus H squared equals 169. Correct. And just a second. I think um, we, we can leave this. And we want to get the H squared alone. So can you get H, H squared, squared? Equals 13 squared minus X squared. Agreed. Thank you so much. C, Samson. Samson, are you there? Samson? Robert? Can you do C? Apply the Pythagorean theorem to ACX to get an equation with H and X in it. Great. Um, you could use X and Y first, correct? Yeah. So do it. 
So, uh, x squared. Or, so we're we're actually looking for we're looking for um the a x c right? There's no x in it. So let's get the x in a second. Let's do with the y, shall we? Sure. Okay, go for it. Um, y squared. Y squared plus h squared equals uh fifteen squared. All right. Now we don't really want two variables, do we? Yeah. So what could you write instead of that? Uh, this one has an X, agreed? Yeah. So why don't we take this and plug it there? Oh, uh, 14, yes. yeah. Okay, go on. 14 squared minus X. It's 14, it's minus. Not, mm -hmm. 14 minus x squared, because it has to go in there, correct? Yeah. Okay, go on. Plus h squared equals 15 squared. Okay. Could you now get h? Um, could you now set, set this to equal h? Uh, yes. Go ahead. H squared equals uh, 14 minus X squared minus 15 squared. I think it's the other way around. Do you agree? Yeah. Uh, 15 squared minus 14 minus X squared. I agree. Thank you so much. Abby. Now, we can subtract them from each other. Or what else could we do? They both equal a um, squared. So what could we do? You could, um, um just, um, like, um, replace it. Like, Correct. We can make them equal to each other, right? Yeah. Because, and what's the advantage of that? Um, then you only have one, um, Exactly, because if we have one variable, we can solve. And if we have two variables, we're up a creek without a paddle. Yeah. All right. So make them, make them equal to each other, please. Um, 13 squared minus. Um, X squared. Wait, isn't that 14? Um, I was writing this one. This one? Oh, yeah. Mm, yeah. Um, um, equals to... Fifteen yeah. squared... Minus... Um, Fourteen minus... Um, x squared. Agreed. And do you see why we can do that? Yeah. We can do that because they both equal h squared. All right. Let's go ahead and do this. 13 squared is? Um, 169 minus x squared. x squared mm -hmm. equals to... Um, 225. Minus. Now, do you know how to expand something like this? Um, if the if your answer is no, I'll show you, right? That's my job. And if your answer is yes, you can go ahead. Tell me if you'd like a little bit better explanation. Hello? Do you see how I wrote 14 minus X and 14 minus X? Yeah. Okay, so that means you have to go multiply the 14. Uh, let me choose a different color for the for this. Just give me a second. 
do. Sorry, I have to make sound effects. That's the way my life, that's the way my brain works. So 14 times 14, and then 14 times X, and then X times 14, and then X times X. Do you know that? Do you know how to do that? It's called FOIL, yes? And so I'm gonna put brackets around it because we'll deal, bring in this negative afterwards. Does that make sense? Yeah. So 14 times 14. Um, over 100. And 96. 96. And 14 times negative X is negative 14 X. And then negative X times 14. Um, negative 14 X. And then negative X times negative X. is positive um, x squared. Squared, yeah. Are you, yeah, ag agreed with me? Yeah. Okay, now bring this. In, bring in the negative. So let's rewrite the beginning. Go ahead, talk to me. Um, 169 minus x squared equals? 169 minus x squared equals to 222. 25. 25. Minus one hundred um ninety six plus um plus twenty eight. Very X. nice. Minus X squared. Do you agree? Oh yeah. Do you agree now these x squareds cancel out? Yeah. Thank goodness. And so what are we going to do now? Um, you move um, 225 and negative 196. To right. Why don't we left. subtract them before we move them? Oh, so, yeah. What's 125, 225 minus 196? Um, 29. Agreed. So isn't that easier? Yeah. So go ahead. You're doing a great job. Um, so then it's 169 minus 29, which um, plus... Minus 29, which equals to um, 140. Mm -hmm. So x, 28, x equals 140. Agreed. Um, so then x equals to um, 140 divided by 28. And guess what? We get a nice number out of that. What do we get? Do you have a calculator? Or no? Uh, no. That's five. Okay, thank you so much. You found X. Um, Robert, oh, sorry, uh, um, that was Abby. Emily, what do you want to do now? Um. Let me redraw the triangle so we can, I, I can't see it at the same time. I, I just, let me do this now. So what do we know now? This is five, right? Yeah. This was, I can't remember. Uh, what was that side? A 13. This is 15. And this whole thing was 14. So how long is, how big is Y? Not that we uh, care. Y is nine. Agreed. All right. So what do we know now? I have a question. Uh, yes. Um, um, who asked? Shayla? Shayla. Yeah. Um, so for D, don't we have to find H? We have to find H, yes. But I'm just doing that. To, it's Oh, yes, yes, yes. So, okay, this is still part of D. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. D continued. Oh, 
Okay. I agree. Okay. Uh, back to you, Emily. Finding H for us. Um, so you can use the Pythagorean theorem. So H is 12. H is 12. And did you use the Pythagorean theorem or did you use a, a Pythagorean triple? Uh, I use the Pythagorean triple. Very good. And if you didn't know it, you could use Pythagorean theorem. H is 12. Okay. Now we're on to E now. Find the area. So it's 12 times 14 divided by 2. And so let's make our life easy. Divide the 14 there, yeah? So 84. 84. Very nice. All right. So now I'm on to F. Shayla, you ready? Yes. Yeah. And we're going to do it slightly differently. What was the formula I gave you for Heron's formula? Um, it was A equals S. The square root of s times s minus a no, that's just not times true. s minus b times s minus c. No, no, no. We, 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 All right. Can you tell me what s is? Um, s stands for the semi perimeter. Semi perimeter. What does that mean? Is it is it like half of the perimeter? Agreed. So. Give me the formula. Calculate the semi perimeter. Okay. Um. A equals thirteen plus fifteen plus four. Divide by two. Agreed. Um. Thirteen plus fourteen plus fifteen. Uh, that is forty. I agree with you. 42 divided by 2 is? 21. And remind me what A was? Um, one of, A was one of the three sides. Right. It doesn't really matter which one's A, B, and C in this formula. But A was 14, B was 15, and C was 13, 13 yes? Yeah. All right. Give me the formula then. Um, it would be... Uh, the square root of 21 times 21 minus 14. Agreed. Times 21 minus 15. Agreed. Times 21 minus 13. Continue. And we can simplify that to the square root of 21 times uh, 7. six and eight agreed now i don't particularly want to multiply that all out do you uh, no no so what should i do what would be the easiest way to solve from here without a calculator um we can split each number let's do that 21 splits in two uh Seven and three. Exactly. Seven doesn't split. We'll use oh. that. And Six does. Two and three. And eight? Two and four. And right. Or yeah. two and right. Your choice. So what can you do now? Um, since we have two threes, we can put oh yeah, since we have two sevens, we can put a seven outside. Agreed. Then, well, I just changed my color because you said three. I'm sorry, I started underlining. Okay. But okay, uh, we'll do seven in 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 green. There we go. There we go. We have a seven. Yes. Oops. Now I'm gonna change this around. And then we the have. Square, mm -hmm. Sorry. And then we have. Oopsie. Two. Threes. So that would Mama. be a three on the outside. Mine's Agreed. Anything else? And um, we have four twos, so we can put two twos on the outside. So that would be seven times three times two times two. Agreed. And we could have also taken a four because two times two times two times two. I think that was four of them. Yeah. It's 16, yes? Yeah. And what's seven times three times two times two? Um, 
84. 84. What did we get the long way? 84. Yeah. And the short way. 84. Very nice. Well done. Okay. Sophia, what'd you think of that? Uh, good. Which would you prefer to do, Heron's formula or the hard way? Um, I don't know. I know which one I'd answer. Heron's formula. Yeah. Okay, so we are going to develop a formula because it's very good to develop a formula before you use it so that you can use it. But then you don't have to develop every time, right? Yeah. So let's start developing it. All right, let me go to see where I am. There we are. Um, we're doing 6.22. All right, can you, um, we don't need to read this whole question. Um, it does tell us that we are gonna give that S is a semi-perimeter, which is the square root, oh, sorry, it, which is A plus B plus C over two. Okay, all right, so far so good? Yeah. Can you read part A? Oh, I wanna draw the triangle. Sorry, give me one second. And that's our H, this is our C, this is our X, this whole thing is our A, this is our B. I think that's all we need, yes? Yeah. All right, so can you read A? Apply the Pythagorean theorem to A, B, X, C, a question with A, B, C, H, and slash or X in it. Go for it. Um, Just use these three variables. Um, X squared plus H squared equals C squared. Agreed. And what letter did we want to get alone? Uh, what letter did we get alone last time? Because in this formula, correct? Yeah. Versus, think I'm going to show you. Uh, just give me a second. The red, the red triangle, which I've circled the red sides in, has these sides, and the green triangle has these sides. Correct? Which one do they yeah. have in common? Um, H. Agreed. So let's get H alone. H squared equals C squared minus X squared. Agreed. Okay, B, thank you so much. Uh, sorry, that was Emily, right? Was it Shayla? My brain just went blank. What? Was that you, was that you Shayla, or was that Emily? Uh, that was not me. Oh, that was not Emily. It was not Emily. Who was it? I think it was Sophia. It was Sophia. Okay, good. I'm behind. Samson, thank you. <laughs> Sorry, Samson, B. Apply the Pythagorean theorem to ACX to get a, an equation with A, B, C, um, a, B, C, H, and or X in it. So that's the green triangle. Would you agree? Uh, yeah. Sort of, I circled the sides in green. Yes? Mm -hmm. So can you go ahead and do that? Okay. So, um, Y squared plus H squared equals B squared. Agreed. Can you get H alone? Uh, yeah. H squared equals B squared minus Y squared. Agreed. Now, do you agree that we really don't want Y? 
Oh. Because we have, well, we, we, oh, just a second. I made, I made a mistake. Just, I, I forgot a little, a little, there we go. There we go. Fixed. Do you agree that now we have two variables, three variables, in fact, too many? Yes? Yeah. So what is Y in terms of A and X's? Uh, sorry, could you repeat that? What is Y in terms of A and X? Um, X plus Y equals A. Agreed. I'm going to write that down. Give me one second. X plus Y equals A. So Y is equal to? Uh, y is equal to A minus X. Very nice. So let's take that little puppy and well, put that where this Y is. Um, A squared equals um, B squared minus A minus X squared. Agreed. Okay, thank you so much. C, Robert. Subtract your equation in B from the one in A to get an equation of just X, A, B, and C. Use this equation to show that X equals uh, A squared plus B, C squared minus B squared divided by 2A. All right, go for it. Let's do it. Um, so... What's it saying? It's it, we're gonna instead of subtracting them, we're just gonna make them equal to each other. Do you agree? Yeah. Okay. So, what's the first one that so Sophia found? Uh, t squared minus x squared. And uh, what was the one that Samson just found? Um. Uh. Eight. Oh, B squared minus uh, A minus X squared. Do you agree with that? Yeah. Okay. And do you know why we could make them equal to each other? Because they both equal H squared. Very nice. Can you please expand? So C squared minus X squared equals B squared minus A squared plus X squared. Now be careful. You are making the... Tragic mistake. This do, is nine minus eight squared. What you just told me is that's 81 minus 64. That's oh. what you just told me. Is that true? No. No. Okay. <laughs> What's nine minus eight squared? Uh. 9 squared, 81 plus 64. No, no, no. Okay, so fine. Let me ask you this. 9 minus 8 squared. Oh, yeah. You think... Right. Isn't that 1? Yeah. So it has nothing to do with 81 plus 64, right? That would be terrible, wouldn't it? Yeah. Okay, so how do you, how do you square something that looks like this? You have to use a method called FOIL. So we have A minus X times a minus x. Do you agree with that? Yeah. That squared means that the bracket is doubled. How do you expand a bracket like this? You can uh, distribute. Correct. So it's a minus those things and then the x minus those things. Yes? So yeah. could you please expand that? And because of this problematic situation with the negative here, I'm going to put a bracket around it. Is that okay? Yeah. Go for it. A squared minus AX uh, minus X AX plus X squared. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah. So now, do you agree? Can you come? Um, in fact, I'm going to go on. Abby, everybody's going to do a couple of steps because we've got a long process to go. Abby, what would you do from here? Um... Let's bring in that negative. Okay. So C squared minus X squared equals? Um, G squared minus uh, 
Um, a squared. A squared plus. Um, uh, plus two ax. Plus x squared. Minus. Um, Oh, Do you yeah, agree? Minus. And tell yeah. me what can cancel out here. Um, x squared. There, there x we squared. go. Very nice. Okay. Um, Emily, continue, please. Um, so why don't we move everything over and leave the 2ax over here? Okay. So it's a squared minus b squared plus so just c. Say, I'm going to see the c squared stays positive, correct? Yeah. So minus b squared. Well, I, plus I, a, mm -hmm. minus b squared. I agree. Yes? Yeah. Okay, so how do you get X alone now? Um, you divide, you, div um, you divide, divide by two a. two a, yeah. So what do you get? So and please put it in alphabetical, uh, let's put the A and C together. Let's put, I put A squared first, yes? A squared plus C squared minus B squared over two A. That is what our X equals. Do you agree? Yeah. Okay, very nice. All right. So this is going to cause us, uh, okay, that's good. All right. All right. Um, Shayla, are you good with what our X is? Yes. Okay, so now it's saying something about, what does D say to do? Um, Substitute your expression from C into one of your earlier equations to show that H equals 2 times the square root of S times S Right, minus so 